Um, all right, so LSU's active right now, and we saw some portal things pop up last week. We mentioned Caden Durham in the state title game where he just went absolutely ballistic. We're going to have Shay and Billy on this week. we got to get them to define what a five-star is. Yeah. I yeah. mean, how do you get a five-star? How do you get a fifth star? I mean, like, if Caden Durham doesn't have five stars, I don't know if I believe in the system anymore. Where do I got to go? I mean, like, do they only have, like, a... I feel like we've had this conversation with them before. We don't... It's kind of like the NCAA. We don't get, like, a firm answer as to what makes a five-star. But is there, like, a finite amount that can be given? Like, there's only so many... Yeah, they can only rate I'd imagine so, but... uh, Cycle. You got to be able to, like, be like... I mean, come on. There's three better running backs in the country than this guy? It's like the Hunger Games. I mean, like... I don't even think there is a five-star running back in this class. Yeah, there is. Caden Durham Durham. is. Well, yeah, about to say... I mean, what he did to the 6A state championship game in Texas is is, takes a five-star running back to do. There are no five-star running backs. That's crazy. Uh, So, LSU picked up a couple of transfers. Jordan Gilbert, uh, safety out of University High. Uh, is uh, pledged back to uh, or pledged to LSU over the weekend, along with Xavion Thomas. Thomas is a wide receiver, uh, Mississippi State, uh, who hit the portal uh, two weeks ago and uh, and pledged to LSU as well. He's got two years remaining. He's another New Orleans native. He's out of Marrero. Uh, went to John Errett, uh, and so he is uh, he's coming home uh, to LSU as well. Some other uh, local uh, flavor to watch. Uh, as uh, as LSU has been very active uh, here over the last couple of days, um, are are some names like DeCamerion, um, DeCamerion Richardson, who is a Mississippi State cornerback who is out of North Louisiana. He's out of Bossier City, um, and he was visiting Ole Miss uh, over the weekend, and he's going to visit LSU. It seems like it's between LSU and and Ole Miss as far as who is going to get the pledge there. But Richardson, being a Louisiana native, obviously has LSU uh, in the mix and heavy uh, on the interest level. Uh, I've talked to people from North Louisiana that says that Richardson is one of the best athletes to come out of that part of the state uh, and would be a really uh, well-added and a much-needed addition to the defensive back room if they were able to get him. When LSU played uh, Mississippi State, he was probably the the one cornerback that had good coverage on Malik Neighbors the whole day. So wow. that Mississippi State team was dead in the water. Right. What a like I mean, LSU needed it in the worst way to be able to play them when they did because they kind of found that was the last time that Mississippi State played like that. Mm-hmm. Where I like, mean, they got gonna, blown out by Bama. No, but they at least they started throwing it a little bit. Mm-hmm. But that game was so like when you go back and look at it, like what a weird blip on the schedule for get right game for Jane Daniels that just happened perfectly for LSU where he was like. 30 of 34 for, what, four touchdowns? And it was just like, okay, LSU can finally find its footing again. And you talk about, if you want to go back one more year, wasn't it Xavion Thomas, um, the punt returner, kick returner? Mm-hmm. That Emory Jones tackled. Emory Jones tackled. 50. Yeah. <laughs> that wow. was out there on an island. Yep. Damn, that was who that was. Yep. He's just wearing a different number. Yeah. He's about, yeah. dude, that... <laughs> Still one, of the, still one of the great plays. Most athletic plays I mean, you've ever still seen. Still one of the great, most underappreciated great plays you've ever seen. Um, there is another Mississippi State DB to keep your, your eyes on. DeCarlos Nicholson is a Mississippi State player. Spent some time at JUCO. LSU was heavy in the mix on him. He put his name into the portal. Another really nice athlete. Uh, does not have the Louisiana ties. He's, a, uh, as we said, I, I believe he's a South Mississippi native. Um, but he is a guy who has experienced, appeared in 25 games, made seven starts uh, last year. He's another one to watch. Obviously, Jair Brown out of Ohio State is somebody that LSU is keeping contact with and keeping in touch with here uh, and is another name that I think could be added to the defensive back room here uh, as a possibility as as somebody in the portal. Uh, Another name is Austin Osberry. Uh, Osbury is, of course, uh, a Baton Rouge native from University High. Uh, went to Auburn out of high school. Uh, his dad is an LSU administrator in Verge yeah. Osbury. Uh, his brother Jaden Osbury was a was he a five star? He was. Yes. I think he was a he, five star. Jaden was a five star. For He's sure. at Notre Dame uh, now, but uh, his uh, so so Jaden's older brother Austin Osbury has put his name into the portal. 
Um, and from a safety standpoint, I, I think mean, this is a, a guy that you've you've got to keep your eyes that's an on. That's instant take, right? I would think so. I mean, I would, I would think so. let's get this deal done. I would think so. In, in Frank like his godfather? Yes. All right. All right. Uncle Frank. Um, KC's asking about Walter Nolan. I think Nolan signed, sealed, delivered to Mil- uh, Ole, Ole Miss. Miss. And they were saying that um, Richardson went to Ole Miss yesterday and on three uh, – RPM'd him to Ole Miss, so they're making their wait. Did Cameron Richardson, the it, cornerback? It, yeah, wow. That we were just talking. Whoa, about. Shea put up a article. I think it was Friday. He was supposed to go to A and M and Oregon, but he canceled those trips to come to LSU. Uh, Ole Miss is backing the truck up. Yeah, like they're making a run. Like they're saying, like they're getting these guys back on offense with Dart and Harris. Uh, the tight ends coming back. Junkins is coming back. So they're saying, look, get, three. get the best defensive players out there. And they've made – I saw where Walter Nolan's NIL evaluation from an on-three perspective was around $480,000. double it. So you would think at minimum he was getting that. And what I've been told from you know people we know around Ole Miss, and, and we've got some really good sources uh, at Ole Miss. And I mean, like I've got no problem telling you. I mean, we talked to Matt Bowers here on the show a couple of weeks ago, and Bowers – uh, is as passionate of a uh, Ole Miss fan that you'll find, uh, and he's also a very successful businessman. Uh, so I mean, you know, put 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 the puzzle pieces together. He he's gotten the call from from Kiffin and the crew. They want to go all in. They 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 want to win. They think that with this offense that they have coming back, that if they can get Pete Golding a defense that he can put out there and get stops, that they can make a run at this thing. And um, you know, from an NIL perspective. Uh, it's very evident that that is what Ole Miss's game is here in this in this cycle. Uh, they're going to get Walter Nolan. It feels like they've gotten Florida's best defensive end uh, out of the transfer portal. Got Tennessee's best defensive end. Got be- Tennessee Tennessee's best defensive player uh, in the portal. Uh, so they are they are they are going after um, they're going after it. Um, and LSU from a NIL perspective uh, look is you know not. You know, as as probably buttoned up as they would even like to be here here locally yet. Uh, but when you look around and see programs like Ole Miss making runs at these things and obviously playing players, you see how the the game is very much changed here, uh, very early on in the days of NIL. So um, it's a big recruiting week, December twentieth, Wednesday, early signing period. Uh, that'll be the first of this. Uh, but a couple of DB names and a couple of guys to watch out for. And as far as LSU losing players, we mentioned Quincy Wiggins pledged to Colorado uh, earlier this weekend as he was up in in Boulder uh, and made his pledge to Dion and, and the University of Colorado. So he'll be up there and, and talking to some people around. I mean, he'll be a uh, you know he'll be an instant starter up there just out of necessity, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. really. They need um, them bodies. Yeah, they they need guys and. You know, not only guys that look like uh, Q, but 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 guys that you know. Hopefully, they can get developed. Did I see where where the defensive line coach for Colorado is joining Elijah Robinson's defensive staff mm-hmm. at Syracuse? Uh, so they will have a new D line coach up there. Uh, I know there's been a big Sapp. push for Warren. Warren Sapp. Sapp is the D line coach. Like he's going to be the D line coach. He's been qualified. I know he had to go through a bunch of like tests. Yeah, he's been like an analyst. Uh, this I know whole he's season. yeah right. So I would think they just elevate him to the on field. What a great role. opportunity. Yeah, he's what got, a great opportunity. He's got halitosis. Um, <laughs> Wait, what? He's got bad breath, and he gets so upset when people talk about it. Really? Yeah. There's like a whole interview about it whenever it's like Ward Sapp has bad breath, and he came, I think it was on Levitard, <laughs> where he came and was like, I heard you all talking about that. I got bad breath. I got bad breath. <laughs> They're like, Warren's upset. He like, dips I'm a lot. I'm terrified. Right. Because <laughs> he, he I mean. He dips a lot. So yeah, he does have shit. bad breath. I smoked a lot of weed, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, mm, like, he's been popped a couple yeah, times. Yeah, it'll do it to you. Got that wolf breath. Mm-hmm. Um, another try, offensive lineman that LSU is, is is making pushing. a push at here. Brad Davis. I yeah. mean, it's just can he coach the D line? Can I he mean, or at least D-line? recruit it. Yeah. Uh, because the offensive line is Jeez. making a push here after Same, a four star, Cohen Eccles, uh, who is a Texas A and M commit, yeah, or has he been was a Texas A and M was a Texas A and M commit. Uh, he committed to to A and M in June over Auburn, Texas, Texas Tech, and LSU. Uh, he decommitted earlier this month. Uh, he was on campus uh, in Baton Rouge with Brad Davis and the crew here recently. 
Uh, so possibly more talent uh, that could be added to this offensive line room. And then uh, was it Chase Pacentis who who played at A&M? Yeah, who started at A&M this year. Who is thinking about possibly LSU as well. Mm-hmm. So more uh more more possibities of of guys in that offensive line in that offensive line room 